Director of Agricultural Modelling and LCA with the AgNext program at Colorado State University, focusing on research on assessing and improving animal agriculture sustainability. So Greg's going to talk to us now about the feed and farm components of the allocation in this uh, methodology. Greg, over to you. Thanks for getting up early for us. You're welcome, Brian. Um, and I can see your slides, slides now. Just pop Excellent. in. There you go. Right. We're good. We thanks. Get out of the way. So, uh, thanks everybody for the great setup for my presentation on allocation. So, first, I think I should uh, define for the audience what allocation is. This is a, proce a procedure to account for what we call in life cycle assessment multifunctionality. That is when an activity produces more than one useful product. The dairy farm itself is a clear example where both meat products from culled animals that go to the beef sector and milk uh, that goes into subsequent processing. Uh, and if we want to know what the carbon footprint of the milk is, we have to, uh, as it were, divide the emissions associated with the dairy farm itself between those two products. And this question of multifunctionality uh, cuts across the entire supply chain that uh, Jude described earlier. Um, all right, so how do I advance my slides? Uh, there we go. So uh, I'll talk today about the allocation at uh, feed and farm, so the dairy farm itself. As you can see, uh, borrowing um, the presentation from Sane or Jude earlier, we have the inputs on the left, right? So feed, electricity, fuel, bread heifers, for example, water, capital goods, all coming into the farm. We have all of the inputs then to the farm that Jude has already described. And so the emissions associated with those things uh, are, are completely accounted. And then we have on the right-hand side of our slide, the main products and potential byproducts. And the question that um, allocation is attempting to answer or the problem it is solving is to say, how much of, let's say, for example, the uh, emissions associated with the tractor uh, running across the fields to produce the, the dairy farm feed, how much of those emissions do we assign to the milk product or to the meat product. So that's the fundamental question that we're trying to answer or the problem that we're trying to solve with this idea of allocation. So in essence, it's a slicing of the pie to distribute the total emissions between the various products and byproducts, main and co-products, if you will. The, the slide is a, a simplified cartoon of what we saw on the previous slide where the inputs are shown here to the left and the activities on the dairy operation itself shown in the, the blue box in the center and the color coding here is intended to uh, show the stages that we would like to take in uh, performing an allocation. The orange boxes represent activities which might be separable. In other words, if we, in a large operation, uh, for example, had uh, knowledge of the electricity used in the milking parlor or the refrigerant requirements used in just the milking parlor, those emissions can be separated from the overall entity or enterprise emissions and set aside. We do not have to allocate in this case because we know precisely that all of the refrigerants, for example, used at the milking parlor should be assigned to the milk product and not to the meat. Similarly with a fattening enterprise, perhaps an, an operation has uh, calves that are raised up to a certain weight and then sold into the beef sector. If the on-farm accounting is such that we can keep track of the inputs associated with that fattening operation, then that too can be separated and allocation of those emissions is not needed. We know that they go directly to the, the meat co-product from the dairy. Uh, manure is a particularly interesting case because it can be recycled internally, in which case there's no allocation needed, or it can be sold uh, potentially as a fertilizer for use on some other product. And the IDF guide recommends, in general, that the manure be treated as a residual, in which case the emissions that are associated 
with activities for managing the manure inside the blue box would be assigned to the, the main co-products, the main and co-products. And any manure that is exported off the farm would be treated as what's called a residual. It would carry no burden with it and it would receive no credit. Um, <clears throat> so let's turn then to a, a specific example of uh, feed for the, the dairy operation. And we have two categories broadly, self-produced feeds and purchased feeds. And if all of the self-produced feeds are consumed by the animals, then there's no allocation necessary because it's an internal cycling and all of the emissions are, are captured and accounted. It's not that we don't include them, it's just that, that we don't need to allocate to them because they're all internal to the operation. However, there may be a situation where some extra feed is sold as a cash crop. And if it's possible, as I mentioned in the previous slide, to, to separate it, to segregate it into two, uh, into a separate uh, accounting so that we know how much of those emissions go with the feed that was sold, then we can also avoid allocation. If we can't do that, uh, then the idea would be that we would use a revenue-based uh, approach to allocate some of the dairy operation to the sold feed. On the incoming side, we have purchased feed and bedding, and the IDF guidelines recommend to use an economic or revenue-based allocation between the main and co-product. An example that we'll look at in a moment uh, would be a, a meal and oil separation. Another common one um, in some countries is uh, distiller's grains coming from ethanol production. And the allocation there is based on the, the relative revenue produced from the sales of ethanol versus distiller's grain. So a particular example then, uh, and I've adopted this directly from the IDF guide. If we have, <clears throat> and I did notice that there were a, uh, was a typo in the version of the guide that I uh, found. In the, in the guide, uh, these numbers are stated in the text. Oops, excuse me. These numbers are stated in the text, but the diagram shows slightly different numbers and the difference is this waste. So if you, if you look at the guide, and you see that it's different than my slides, that's the, the reason. So in this situation, we have uh, a rapeseed mill that produces rapeseed meal and rapeseed oil. The, the meal, of course, is most likely to be used as an as a ingredient in a feed ration for the dairy. And the allocation of the uh, emissions associated with the production and, and uh, production of the rapeseed meal uh, is derived by using the following formula on a revenue basis where we have some known or assumed prices for the, the two uh, co-products, uh, the revenue for the meal sales divided by the total sales. And so that's fairly simple, right? 520 kilograms times 18 cents per kilogram uh, divided by the total and we get about 20.4% of the total emissions of the milling operation, which of course includes anything associated with treatment of the waste, as well as the production of the rapeseed and any electricity, et cetera, that may be used in the mill itself. All of those emissions then are allocated 20%, 20.4% to the rapeseed meal and the remainder to the rapeseed oil. So it's a quite straightforward uh, computational approach uh, that is based on the LEAP guidelines and adopted by the IDF to use this revenue basis. Turning to the slightly more complicated uh, situation of looking at the, the milk and meat uh, and potentially manure. So I mentioned that the guidelines recommend that manure be treated as a residual so that there's no allocation to the manure. If there is a situation where the manure is not considered a residual, then we would recommend um, to use a revenue basis. So the revenue from manure sales divided by the total sales of, of culled animals, milk, and revenue <clears throat> would give us an allocation fraction to the manure. Again, if the manure is just used internally, there's no need for, for this calculation. In, uh, in the second step of this allocation process for milk and meat, we would first subtract any of the emissions that are associated with things that we can separate, for example, the milking parlor, and then the remaining emissions would be subject to the allocation 
fr fraction that we would calculate on the basis of a biophysical relationship, which is given by that second equation on this slide. So the net energy of milk production divided by the total net energy used by the animals for uh, milk and meat production. Uh, some of you may ask, what, why is maintenance included? And the answer is that the maintenance of the animal is distributed, the, the feed for maintenance, those emissions are distributed in accordance with the allocation factor that's calculated using this equation. So simply the net energy of lactation times the milk production divided by the net energy of uh, milk plus the sum of the different animal classes that may be sold. So the summation net energy of a calf minus the amount of or the weight of calves sold, net energy of uh, uh, fed uh, or fed calves or bred heifers perhaps that leave the, the farm system. So summing all of those up, and we'll look at an example here in a minute. Of course, the, the big M's represent the mass of uh, those two products. So again, this is a, a, a repeat of the example given in the guidelines. If we have uh, a herd of 650 lactating uh, milking shorthorn animals with a given mature weight, producing a certain amount uh, on an annual basis, giving us a total of about 5.5 metric tons of fat and protein corrected milk produced by the farm. If we assume a 25% replacement rate and that excess heifers, those not needed for replacement, uh, and bull calves are fattened to 300 kilograms for 12 months before they're sold, we can uh, calculate the, uh, the allocation factor. And in this case, we've uh, previously calculated using all of the inventory that Sonny described uh, to, to compute the uh, uh, carbon dioxide equivalent emissions, we've calculated 7.74 uh, uh, metric tons of carbon, uh, 7,735 7, metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent for this entire dairy. So now the question is, how do we allocate between the different um, products leaving the farm? Uh, the net energy for lactation of uh, fat and protein corrected milk at the 4% and 3.3% protein that Jude mentioned is uh, 3 point megajoules per kilogram. Uh, the net energy uh, assigned to growth at birth is 27.5. This is essentially the net energy for um, uh, pregnancy. Uh, and then as they, they grow, they become a little bit more efficient and uh, the net energy on a per kilogram basis uh, drops and then it goes back up. The the mathematics, the details of these equations are presented in the guideline in an appendix and, and all of the detail that you might like to see. And so if we run the numbers at the bottom, the 8,500 kilograms of milk per year times the herd size gives us the quantity of milk produced. And we can do the same calculations for um, the, the fed calves and the mature cold cows. In this example, uh, mortality is not has not been accounted for. So if we summarize that in this uh, in this cartoon and then we do the calculations, we get 3.1, which is the, the milk net energy times its production divided by the, the total. Uh, and we come up with 85.1% of the total emissions from the dairy operations. And this is, this is assuming that there has been no separation, right? So the milking parlor, et cetera, hasn't been separated out. If it had been separated out, then the 7735 would be smaller and the amount of emissions associated with the milking parlor itself would be added after the allocation had been completed. Um, we are in the process of developing a spreadsheet to help this uh, allocation calculation. And I'm just gonna show this one screenshot uh, to, to give you an idea of uh, what it, what it hopefully will be able to do by the time we're able to post it on the International Dairy uh, website in conjunction with the guide. Um, in this case, I've, I've changed it uh, to a Guernsey. Uh, I've increased the, uh, the milk fat concentration here to 4.4%. So you'll notice that the 5 million kilograms uh, of total production in, in actual weighed milk is actually 5.2 million uh, kilograms in terms of fat and protein corrected milk and the, the 
the spreadsheet has a, a fairly simple formula that's also provided in the guide that will give you uh, that conversion between uh, milk produced at a, a particular uh, fat and protein content to fat and protein corrected milk. So if we uh, look here, we see a certain number of animals that are sold and we can run through the calculations. And at the end over here, we'll see that 87% of the allocation goes to the milk, uh, 6.2 to the cold cows, 4.1 and 2.3 to the fed steers and fed heifers. And that's how we do allocation between milk and meat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. And uh, just to keep things moving, a few questions came into the chat while you were speaking, so don't go away. We might have something for you at the end if we get some question and answer time. You've done well on your time management. Thank you very much. Now we're going to move up the value chain a bit uh, to dairy manufacturing and looking at allocation there. Anna, remember, is the scientific lead on climate and environment at Isla Foods, but also the co-chair of this group and has a background in LCA as well. So Anna, over to you to look at allocation at the dairy manufacturing level, please. Yes, and I hope you can see my screen now. Indeed, we just need to get in presentation mode and we're good. And I see you're doing that so well. Done. Perfect. There we go. We're good. Yes. So now Greg went through how to do uh, the allocation for the feed and the dairy farm. And now I will talk about how to do allocation at the, the dairy set for dairy site for the dairy manufacturing. So you have you need to count of course for all the inputs coming out in coming into the to the site so all the milk electricity heat water chemicals chemicals etc and then you have the uh, outputs that goes for further treatment that could be solid waste product waste wastewater etc and then you could also have some emissions for example from uh, cooling agents and then you need to allocate all these uh, emissions associated with the inputs and what happens on the dairy site between the different dairy products. So that could be milk, cream, yogurt, cheese, butter, milk powder, etc. And then there could of course also be some byproducts going to, for example, feed or biogas. And the allocation procedure that is that the first step is to subdivide the system, as Greg also said, and assign inputs and outputs to specific uh, products. Um, however, it's, and then the second step is to subtract and inputs or outputs from step one, if that's relevant, and allocate the remaining inputs and outputs between the products based on the milk solid content. Uh, so Greg talked about for feed to do it on a revenue basis and economic allocation. What we do on the manufacturing side is to do it on a milk solid content. So you could either treat it then as a if you wouldn't have any uh, information, then you can just treat it as a black box. So for example, if you have the energy coming in, then we just allocate it between all the products based on the milk solid content. However, if you would know how much energy is going specifically for drying, for example, then you should allocate or assign the drying process with that specific energy amount and subtract that from the system and then allocate the remaining energy between the other products. So that is the fundamental basis on how to do the allocation on the manufacturing site. We also developed this within the, the, um, the guide. It's also an illustration from the guide. It's an, the allocation hierarchy between uh, the outputs and it's inspired by the uh, food waste hierarchy. So when we talk about food products, like the main products coming out from a site, the allocation should be based on milk solids. If we talk about feed, which don't have the same uh, value, then uh, economic allocation uh, could be relevant or a cutoff. When we talk about biogas, uh, then it's system division or a cutoff. And then waste, of course, no allocation is needed because waste goes to treatment and emission from the waste should be allocated between the different products. And then the allocation of raw milk between the different products. So you have the allocation factor here, uh, and then you use this equation. So MS is the milk solid content as percent, and milk solids is here the fat, protein, and lactose. So it's these three milk solids we talk about. And then Q is the quantity of the product. Um, 
And typically you would allocate, you would have well, how much of the milk solid uh, in a product coming out from the site divided by the total milk solid coming out from the site. However, it, could, it can be really difficult to have the total overview of all the milk solid content in all products coming out from the site. But maybe you would have all information of the raw milk intake, like how much milk solid is coming into the site. Then you could allocate and using the inputs instead. It's just important to reckon that, that we, you can't mix these two. So I do need to allocate um, the milk solid uh, in the raw milk for a, pro, for a specific product coming into the site with the total uh, milk solid in the total raw milk coming into the site. So, and then of course also to count for the milk losses um, that is related to any product. So he has to stress that you need to allocate either on the milk solids into the site or on the milk solids out from the sites. And then I will also take a calculation example as well. So if you have the total carbon footprint of a site, that is, for example, uh, one and a half million kilo CO2 equivalents, and that would include an all upstream emissions and treatment of waste. So all the feed and milk and so on Greg talked about is coming into the site that is included in this total carbon footprint. And you have then one million kilo fat and protein corrected milk from the farm with a milk solid content of 12.15% that comes into the farm. You have 1% food losses. And then you have some skim milk coming out, 0.89 million kilo skim milk with a milk solid content of 9% and 0.1 million kilo cream with a milk solid content of 40%. And again, milk solid is here, the fat, protein, and lactose. And if you're interested to know what is the allocation factor in the carbon footprint for the skim milk, then you need to apply this allocation factor uh, or this equation and this allocation factor I uh, just explained before. So to take the total, um, to take the milk solid contents and 9% multiplied with the uh, total amount of milk solid, um, total amount of skim milk coming out from the, from the site. So 9% or 0 0.09 multiplied with 0 0.89 and then divide it with the total amount of milk solids coming out from the site. So the allocation factor for skim milk in this case would then be 66%. And if you then would calculate the carbon footprint for uh, one, kilo sim, one kilo skim milk at factory gate, you would take the allocation factor 0 0.66 multiplied with one and a half million uh, kilo CO2 equivalent and divided with the total amount of skim milk coming out. So 890,000 uh, kilo skim milk. And the carbon footprint per kilo skim milk at factory gate would then be 1.11 kilo CO2 equivalents per kilo skim milk. So that is uh, the way how to do the allocation on uh, the manufacturing site. And I would just then like to finalize with a summary slide. This uh, table is also found in uh, the carbon footprint guide. And um, I just want to highlight or mention the, the most important situation where you need to do allocation. And that is for the production of imported feed. The IDF uh, says that economic allocation should be used when we talk about the dairy farm operation. So allocating between milk and meat, and it's biophysical allocation. And uh, at the dairy site for manufacturing dairy products, then the allocation key is based on milk solids. So with that, I uh, will uh, finalize that. And um, I don't know, should I just continue with the land use and land